Thank you very much, Mr. DeMarco. We'll start with uh, Mr. Mazier for five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commissioner. It's nice to see you again. Uh, Commissioner, uh, an internal audit of grants and contribution programs revealed that the Minister, Minister Guibault's department was not monitoring 10% of the projects and not reviewing a further 27%. In fact, Minister Guibault's management of taxpayer dollars was so bad that according to the report, it represented, and I quote, potential legal and reputational damage, end quote. Throughout all your audits, have you ever noticed similar findings where the current government has failed to monitor taxpayer-funded programs? So, uh, as I mentioned in my opening statement, we haven't had a deep dive in any, into any of environment and climate change Canada's grant and contribution programs the last couple of years, but we have looked at several other departments' uh, programs. Um, one example uh, from last year would be the Net Zero Accelerator Fund uh, from ICED, and we did uh, have concerns regarding that fund. In 2022, or 2021, we had the Emissions Reduction Fund from NRCAN, and we had concerns there as well. These are some of the examples of of large uh, grant and contribution programs that we have audited, audited and found concerns with. Do you recall how many dollars that involved? How many dollars? Well, the Net Zero Accelerator Fund was $8 billion. Uh, Emissions Reduction Fund, the onshore program, which we audited, was between 600 and $700 million. A lot of money. A lot of taxpayers' dollars that are not accounted for, that's for sure. Commissioner, have you ever conducted an audit that revealed the current government was not publicly measuring the value for money of uh, taxpayer-funded programs? Yes, yeah, so value for money is an important uh, aspect of our work. In fact, sometimes one calls a performance audit a value for money audit. So uh, that surfaced quite clearly in our most recent report um, uh, from 2024, the Strategic Innovation Fund's Net Zero Accelerator Initiative. Uh, we have concerns about the failure to uh, to properly track and uh, tra track value for money. Uh, we touch on it in other reports as well, and it's something that we're also looking at in uh, in our next audit regarding the Net Zero Act, as opposed to the Net Zero Accelerator. Uh, so it is something that we're quite concerned about. We have some calculations in here about value for money in the Net Zero Accelerator Initiative, and I could get into that in more detail if you wish. Uh, sure. Okay, well, I'm wrestling here with the mic. Um, Commissioner, have you ever found any evidence to suggest the current government is inflating or inaccurately reporting the emissions they claim to be reducing? Uh, that have been reduced to date or that claims regarding future emission reduction? Claims. <laughs> so we have a, ra a range of audits where we find that the expected reductions uh, have been overestimated or are the subject of overly optimistic assumptions. Um, so if you call those claims or projections, the, then we do have examples of of that in a wide variety of reports. It's actually disappointing that something that's come up in reports for many years and we've had to say somewhat the same thing in different reports over the years in terms of overly optimistic assumptions. Probably the two that come to mind most recently would be the hydrogen audit as well as the emissions reduction fund. In both of those cases, we found that the expected reductions were overly optimistic. And then in our first Net Zero Act uh, report from last year, we also reported on some examples, uh, for example, in the area of uh, public transit. What's the implications of this? Like if the, if the government, you're reporting this, you're telling them, look, at you're, you're double counting, you're inflating the numbers, you're not basically telling the truth to Canadians on how these programs are, are, uh, are functioning. So what, what is the implications of that? What's the results? What happens? Well, as indicated in our 2021 report on lessons learned in climate change, the failure to execute plans because of double counting, as you mentioned, overly optimistic assumptions, policy decisions that may undermine initiatives, a whole, whole range of things, 
the, the net effect of that has been a series of failures to meet targets over the last three decades. So it's not just an academic question about, oh, this program isn't meeting its objective or it set out a, an overly optimistic, uh, optimistic objective. All of that has added up over the years to a net failure to meet any of these targets to mitigate climate change through emission reductions. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's go ahead for uh, five minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, an internal audit of grants and contributions programs revealed that the Environment Department was not monitoring 10% of the projects and not reviewing a further 27%. Why weren't these projects being monitored? That that will be based on, on the risk, I would say, of those programs. We cannot monitor all programs as we cannot audit every, every element. So I would say that it is a question probably for the, for the department in a, to, to provide more information about why those specific elements were not uh, entirely looked at, the, 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 the entire um, grants and contributions uh, funding. Personally, I, I find it quite unacceptable that here you have a, an environment minister not monitoring how many emissions are being reduced with taxpayers' dollars. And you really don't have a reason for it. So it's, it's ultimately up to the minister to uh, send that signal back to you guys to, to check for that? So it is up to the deputy minister to make deputy sure minister. that they have the right controls into place and making sure that their programs are, are, are effective and also to make sure that they have um, um, fulfilled their obligation in terms of terms okay. and conditions of the contribution funding Thank you. or Thank the grant. Can you provide a list of these projects to the committee that were not uh, being reviewed and were not monitored? We'll follow up with, with the department and provide that information you can provide to that. the committee. Thank you. The government launched an $8 billion taxpayer-funded program called the Net Zero Accelerator. The government claimed they could reduce emissions by giving away $8 billion to mega corporations through this program. According to the Environment Commissioner, and I quote, a project of more than $50 million also requires Treasury Board approval, concurrence letters from ministers of other concerned departments, and cabinet approval. The Commissioner also state that the net zero accelerator projects, and I quote, can be fast-tracked with a letter to the Prime Minister, end quote. How many pro net zero accelerator projects were fast tracks with a letter to the Prime Minister? That I don't have the, the information for you. Um, we can go back to the department. My, but my understanding is the commissioner will be appearing just after us. So that could be a question for, for him. So in that list of, of people, it does go to the, to the Treasury Board. And you have, do you have any recollection of any letters, any, anything like that, that would never go past your, your uh, desk as far as the letter? No, approve? I don't have any recollection. Okay, thank you. Are you aware of any other emission reduction projects that can be fast-tracked with a letter to the Prime Minister? I'm not aware, no. Treasury Board is required to approve net zero accelerator projects that receive more than $50 million. How many emissions have been reduced to date from the approved projects? This will, uh, a, a good reference point will be to go in the um, department, departmental plan and departmental results report where the information will be provided for each of those programs. But don't, you do an audit on these programs. The whole idea of releasing the funds is to get outcomes. By the, and the Treasury Board is watching over that and that's that's what you gave before for testimony so why don't you know the answer to that i'm, I'm not responsible for the outcomes for all those uh, departments deeply heads uh, that are administering those programs for those departments will be in a better position to provide the answers to your questions so the deputy minister of environment would know about the environment the net zero accelerator fund yeah, this is a program that he, that is part of his of his department. That's correct. It's interesting because he he said he didn't know anything about it. So uh, well, I guess we'll have to get him back here in front of committee. Uh, is the environment department fully monitoring the results of their grants and contribution spending? 
So they're, they're, they're doing audits, like I said. And I would like also to add that as per the Financial Administration Act, every um, programs need to be greater than $5 million, need to be evaluated every five years. So that, it, that is a requirement, a requirement in, in the law. So every, every department need to do that. So they are, so in, I'll ask the question again, just so we're clear. Is the Environment Department fully monitoring the results of their grants and contribution spending? Is it law then? It, it, like I said, every programs above $5 million, as per the Financial Administration Act, need to be reviewed every five years. And all those evaluations will be accessible on the department's uh, website. Okay, thank, thank you very much.